Hello everyone and welcome to February. We're going to be going through the book of Acts in February and we'd already did the the beginning of the sequel that was written by Luke, uh, a Gentile physician, uh, in December when we did we started with the Christmas story and we went through that whole book of Luke. Now this is going to be like the sequel and it's the book of Acts and it's super exciting. This has so much energy there's so much happening, and this is the promise that God left us with that would come. And we're talking about the Holy Spirit, and it's very exciting time that, that we're going to be reading here. I want to just kind of get you up to speed where we're at. This is kind of like the setting of the book. I'm just going to read this to you. It says, Luke wrote uh, both Luke and Acts well in Rome with Paul during the time of the Apostles' first Roman imprisonment. Uh, we, they figure the time is about A.D. 61 to 60 and 63, somewhere right in that. Uh, that We know that Luke was the Gentile physician. It tells us that in Colossians 4, 14. Uh, he is um, the dear friend and the traveling companion of Paul. Luke was an eyewitness to many of the events he recorded in Acts. And his well-written book illustrates Luke's keen knowledge of Greek literature and the language, um, which will be, it's going to be a very different than what we just did last month in Proverbs. So the book of Acts provides the history of the early Christian church. Sometimes I feel like we're in the early Christian church the way that we get treated sometimes. It tells how the gospel spread with miraculous and unhindered success from its Jewish roots in Jerusalem to Rome, the center of the Roman Empire. Acts especially follows the activities of two apostles, and we know that's going to be Peter and Paul. As a historian, Luke has researched the events found in Luke and Acts so that he might provide a, re a reliable written account for his readers. That's me and you. Um, he also wants you and me to know with certainty what they had been taught about the Christian faith. With certainty. His desire is to confirm their faith and he wants his readers to live a strong and committed Christian life in the midst of a pagan world. And he is talking to you and me. We are we are really there. Um, now, when it begins, he's going to be addressing to a specific person. And the guy's name is Theophilus. Um, but what Luke, um, even if, he, if it was written to a certain person or if it was written to a certain group of people, um, it says uh, the name Theophilus might have been suggested that Luke addressed all those who love God. Since Theoph <laughs> we're going to get saying that a few times, Theophilus means lover of God, which that would be you and me. Either way, either way, Luke wrote Acts to be read by many. And so here we go. Let's start with the book of Luke or with the book of Acts. Hopefully I don't get too confused. Chapter one, verse one. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles, he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the time or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's us. After he said this, he was taken up from before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, then suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking into the sky? 
This same Jesus who has been taken back from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you have seen him go to heaven. Then the apostles turned to Jerusalem from a uh, return to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. Where they arrived, they went upstairs to a room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. And they all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And in those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. And they said, brothers and sisters, the scripture has to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and prayed in our ministry. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open and all of his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called the field in their language a keldama, that is the field of blood. For, Peter said, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let no one, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take the place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of us, uh, these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph, called Bersabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over the apost apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belonged. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the 11 apostles. And that's where it stops before we go into chapter 2. So we got a lot of things going on there. I think it's exciting when we get into this. This is, this is what... This is where we're going to understand the power. We've seen the things that God can do, the miracles and the, the, re the resurrection from the dead. We've seen this to this point, but now we're going to know about the power that comes with the Holy Spirit. Um, I put on Facebook just a few minutes before I started this, and it's um, it's uh, Matthew Redman. It's the same Jesus, and I would highly encourage you to listen to that um, and to really get a feel for this same Jesus, and that they're talking about here. And he and in his song, he's going to go through all the different things about this Jesus. It's awesome. Plus, it'll get you a little revved up, and. Um, I always like for you to go and look for a scripture that spoke to you and, and the scripture that spoke, there was, it's, a, I love the book of Acts. So I, I can't say that just one did, but this is the one that I'm going to camp on with you. Um, I, I went to a verse 11 and this is what it said. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking in the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go to heaven. And that's a promise. I think that's so self-explanatory. I don't think I have to expound on that at all. This same Jesus who you've seen taken into heaven will come back in the same way that you've seen him go to heaven. This is what they told us from the beginning. They're explaining it to us what's going to happen. We know that he died, he was resurrected, and he ascended into heaven. And now we, the disciples of Christ, the, the body, the church, the bride of Christ, we're waiting for that second time that he comes back, when he comes back to get us. I, I want to read you something before um, I leave you to mull it over yourselves. Love to see, you know, what's speaking to you. Maybe it's just a couple of words. It doesn't have to be whole scriptures. You know, whether you like to write a lot or you just like to write, a, you like a couple of words or, or just like the post, whatever it is, um, make a note in there and just something, something has to speak to you. 
Um, and I wanted to let those that had asked me, um, starting tonight, this is going to go on, on YouTube too. Uh, there's a lot of people that, uh, for whatever reason, they don't want to be on Facebook. And they've asked me to post it on YouTube. So that will start. Um, I'll put that on. And it takes a little bit for it to load. But it's when I'm done here, I'll put that on there. But I want to leave you with this. And this is kind of like um, our mandate for Acts. The, uh, um, this is what I'm hoping that you're going to do. So listen to this. As you read Acts, put yourself in the place of the disciples. Identify with them as they are filled with the Holy Spirit and experience the thrill of seeing thousands respond to the gospel message. Sense their commitment as they give each ounce of their talent and treasures to Christ. And as you read, watch the spirit-led boldness of these first century believers who through suffering and in the face of death take every opportunity to tell of their crucified and risen Lord. They decided to be 20, then we're going to decide to be 21st century versions of those men and women. And we already have a bunch of people that we can pick out. It already talked about who was in the room with them. And uh, there were some girls there too. I leave you with this. Are you going to decide to be that 21st disciple for Jesus? He's expecting you to. We'll see you tomorrow. Listen to Matt Redman.